First of all, good morning guys. In this video, um, I want to show you the latest update. I first wanted to thank you all because we've hit the 500 unique downloads. Uh, I've never expected that to happen. When I started this, I thought this would be just a little tiny hobby project, which just grew out into something a little bit bigger. <laughs> so um, last week I've been working on an update for you, which has mainly focused on the autopilot. Now, I'm just going to take you along in what has changed. There were some bugs in the old one that I fixed as well, so thank you for reporting. Um, in this update, I've got some new functions that are going to retrieve data, and I've got some new functions that are going to send some data. So let's just dive in what has changed, and I hope you liked it. If you keep updated, subscribe, and if you like this video, like. And let's dive right in. Now, first things first, let's first take a look at some bugs that we fixed so you guys can uh, use them more efficiently. Uh, oh, I see I've got them in the documentation yet. It will be in there when the video goes live. There are some new functions. Let's see if I can get them up here on the screen. Okay, so we have our NAVs. The NAV frequency would, with uh, in a G1000 plane, Descent, megahertz, nav standby plus and minus would work properly. It would change the standby nav frequency and that was all fine. Now in a G530 plane like the uh, Cessna 578, am I correct? Or the 172, like the one, not the one with the G1000 of course, but the other version. Um, it would change the active nav frequency, so that was wrong. If you now use the Let's zoom in. Can I zoom in? Yeah, I can zoom in. Send ink whole nav one, so it changes the part before the dot, and send ink frag nav one, changes the part behind the dot, and this will always update the standby frequency. It does work a little bit better than the old version as well, because this had a this kept something in memory that doesn't really get updated if you swap the frequencies. So that's something I still need to work out. It was a little oversight on my part so if you use these two all should be fine right now there were also some inconsistence inconsistencies in the standby plus frequencies that sometimes uh, i spelled stand by where i spelled by with capital b um so i made it uniform to a uh, standby without without a capital b let's take a look at the test setup of today like on the right side we have a radio setup and on the left side I've created a fast seven segment display stack to display the information that comes from the game with four LEDs. Now these are all just <laughs> let's see if I can get this properly in shot. Here we go. Like if something now unplugs it's fine because I already recorded the video. Here we go. As we're able to tell, they all the parts are all just hooked up to this breadboard, you see. Um, so it's really some easy prototyping, and it all goes to our oh, oh but there's an Arduino Mega behind it. Here we go. Now it's important if you use a Mega or Arduino to place a capacitor between the reset switch and the ground when you want to send data over serial or else it will keep resetting and it won't work now it's this little prototype is 3d printed but it's important to just use the materials you have lying around and that you're comfortable using with for me it's just that i live in a two bed bedroom apartment um so it's really not an option for me to go woodworking in the morning like right now my girlfriend is asleep she would murder me if i would start chopping up wood right now um so it, perhaps you should do it because that's the reason i got this for my uh, birthday the 3d printer and they are quite inexpensive these days uh, so that's also a plus so um if i had a shack like in the backyard or even had a backyard i would probably make this out of wood or something it just feels so much nicer but for me it's more feasible to 3d print because i don't upset my neighbors I don't have to fight my girlfriend all day. The place stays clean, you know. Um, so that's something to just consider for yourself. Now, when we go to our documentation, 
we have a whole new section for the sending of commands. Because it's been a lot. <laughs> you can send almost almost everything towards the game regarding the other pilots. Talk a little on a dedicated on switch, a dedicated off switch. So it's important to look for yourself, what do I want? Do I want a toggle? Like if you press a button, it goes on if it's all off and it goes off if it's on. Or do you want a dedicated on or off state? The last one can especially be useful if you use uh, a toggle, like a physical toggle. Let me grab one. So let's say a toggle. Oh, let's get this in shot. So, so we have an on state and we have an off state. So we know that every time it's on this position, we want it to be off. And if it's in this position, we want it to be on. So that's when we use could use the dedicated on or off states. Or if we have a simple momentary button, a toggle would probably work better, right? So we could just press it to turn on or press it to turn off. So that's something to keep, yeah, just a design consideration to make if you're gonna be using these functions. It does look like some functions are in double. Um, and that's mainly because there are, let's see if I can find one. Let's say the toggle autopilot panel altitude holds. We have the toggle AP panel and we have the toggle altitude hold. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. That's why I put them both in, they're both in the documentation. And I st the documentation isn't really that complete yet for on their side. So I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Um, it was a hell to get some of these functions in because it wasn't in the documentation. I think I had to find them from some fora that some guy mentioned and then eventually it all worked out. But there are some peculiar things that I'm going to show you right now where you need to look out for. Okay, so I loaded up my Airbus. I did a cold start, so I had to take a while to, you know, get the thing running. I'm using the fly-by-wire one, by the way, um, because I personally love it. I like the way they, the touches they gave to the airplane and how it feels. Um, so that's what you're seeing right now. I made sure that everything works with this version as well. And the reason I'm starting out with the Airbus, normally I start out with the Cessna, is because there are some differences between some planes. Now this plane has um, yeah, like this digital Coleman altimeter. Right? So if I send an input towards the game, we can see a change, right? See, quite snappy and quite fluent. I'm not quite sure if you're able to... I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the... Like, you can really tell the ticks from the in-game happening. It's smooth, nothing to complain about, right? Um, and this works fine because you mainly use this Pressure, this pressure meter, um, pressure, I don't know, barometric pressure value, right? Um, and some planes, you have this little thingy here, like the steam gauge one. This one isn't really a steam gauge, I think, right? Or is it? I'm not quite sure. But um, if we then use the rotary encoder to change anything, it only changes the steam gauge and it doesn't change the digital version. So that's important to check for your own plane if it works the way you like it to. It's something I still need to figure out um, if there is a way to get it to work on these, those planes as well um, to make sure that you can use it on any plane you'd like. So that is something that I'm still working on to figure out. Right now you can you can use it, but there's a chance it only affects the steam gauge. Now, if we take a look at, let's say, I'm not quite sure what I've hooked up to this one. Oh yeah, I've got my target altitude, current altitude, Right now we are six miles above our target. That's what these values indicate. I've set it up like this, so I've, oh, you can't see it actually. Whoa. So right now the bottom part is our actual altitude. Uh, the one above is the target altitude in the, in the plane itself, like the autopilot. And this is the difference between both. So that's something that I just made as a little demonstration, so you can see it happening. And the top one is the airspeed. I'm going way too steep. Um, we can change things. Like um, if I rotate this, something changes. This is the heading. Okay, I'm not going to take this one. I'm going to rotate this one. Yeah. 
I've divided it by 100 because or else it wouldn't fit, right? So uh, target altitude is now 51, 52, 55. And look how pretty it really feels like the way it looks in game right now. Sometimes it's, you have to remember I don't have any debouncing turned on on my rotary encoders um, or programs. So sometimes it does jump back. But as you're able to tell, it's so much more fluent than it was before. Um, it's just, it amazes me the difference. Look how easily we can go back and forwards. Now, it <laughs> does look a bit more choppy on this display, and that's the reason it's just because these seven segment displays, like these ones, I got these from, uh, I don't know, actually China, I think. Um, they are thread blocking. So, what does that mean? It means that if it's updating its data, everything gets blocked. Oh, I have my lights on. Uh, everything gets blocked else. So this one only updates if the first one is updated. It's like a little waterfall, right? Um, in this case, it's it's fine. It works good. It works decent enough. But it's a bit choppy, um, especially if we I'm going to show you another example in the Cessna in a few seconds where you can see that if we get a string because we've got a first string because you guys requested it um, towards our seven segment displays it's gonna block the entire display array until the first one is displayed now, I, I am a big fan of these displays though because um, let's take a look they only take two pins like the clock and the dial pin a ground and five volts so they, they, they have four pins but the five volts and the ground are like a common line, right? Like we're used to on the breadboard. And this CLK and the diode just go to the Arduino itself to any port you'd like. So I just needed eight ports to get these displays running. And I think they're quite big and they, I like the way they look. Now, let's see. Normally I only start recording when uh, we float in the plane. But for this one, I needed to actually be a little bit earlier. I'm going to show you something. Let's see. Uh, is AP available or not available? Master on, vertical lock, heading lock. I'm not quite sure what I set up, so I'm gonna flip on some switches. No, not indicated heading. It should be the autopilot. These ones, yes, correct. So when I start it, we're able to tell that Cessna Skyhawk G1000. That's what it says. So um, it's actually the plane's name that is coming in through the avionics tab. We now have the plane title name. And like I said, it's thread blocking. So the other values only come in when this one is finished. So it's important if you take something like the plane name with one of these displays that you only update it when something new comes in. So I'm just gonna take straight off. I didn't do a cold start just to, you know, I want to show you some things. Is it that windy? No, right? What the fuck? Oh, I don't have even. I don't even have the sliders or flaps out. Yeah. Um, here we go. Let's make sure that we don't uh, collide with Finny Rinders. So let's see if we can get this in a stable position. We can because we have an autopilot, right? So you see, I press this button. And our autopilot is engaged. Now, while it is engaged, I have a boolean on this light that says if the autopilot is on, turn the light on, right? So that's something that we we can now do. Um, I've got a button to like increase the target altitude, right? This is the vertical speed. We don't want to change that right now. Oh no, we want to go up. So let's say I want to go to fifteen hundred knots. I press my rotary encoder. And why is that one turning on? Oh, because I'm going up, right? Yeah. Here we go. So I'm able to tell the autopilot, stop, um, heading lock on, and 
altitude hold, altitude lock, attitude, altitude. Let's do this one, start. I forgot the two values, but it, you know that's the, that's the beauty of this the application. I can just start it and start it, uh, restart it, right? Running. Okay, so this is the heading lock. There we go, three fifty nine, three fifty seven. See, changes and we're quite able to tell if we rotate, like how smooth it goes. See. See how smoothly it runs over it compared to what we are used to. There we go. So now we should be leveling out. So that's fine. Um, what were I, was I telling about the this is the, this is the vertical speed, Dave. We don't need to change that right now. This one. There we go. Because we have the heading lock on, uh, altitude lock going to turn this light on and this is going to be the vertical speed one so if we turn that one on i don't have that enabled so uh but you get a drift um we have the boolean states that are working right now and it's working perfectly fine so that's something that you now are able to do there are some things to look out for though and that's there are some functions that, oh, wrong one. like do 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 do, do set now i do include them in the documentation but they aren't functional yet so i still need to work out how to properly implement it for you guys that you're able to actually set the values yourself so let's say autopilot speed value there is a function in the doc in the sdk so that you can just set it yourself so then you could create something like a starting point for yourself let's say you want to start it 100 knots you're able to just input that as a value send it with your arduino and the game will put you at that speed or at least in this case the autopilot speed limit right or the altitude is something you can set uh, the mac the buh, 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 attitude altitude all things you can set but they don't work yet Thank you very much for the support so far, guys. Really appreciate it. A special shout out to Steven. If you want to keep updated, subscribe. And if you liked it, leave a like. And I will keep the updates coming.